Hi, uh, my name is Tatiana. I'm a rising second year at the University of Chicago, and this summer I've been working on uh, reservoir computing, the observation and prediction of chaos. So as an overview, um, many systems in both nature and the man-made world exhibit chaos. But up till now, it's been very difficult to understand, characterize, predict these systems. But one thing reservoir computing, which I'll explain in a minute, uh, can do is give us new ability to understand these systems in ways that we never before thought might, could be possible. So some central ideas. What is chaos? So, Chaos is the idea that very, very small changes in initial conditions will lead to very big changes over time. Think like the butterfly effect. Reservoir computing, uh, if anybody is familiar with artificial neural networks, um, reservoir computing is an extension of, of this, um, but the difference is that only the output weights instead of the weights inside the um, reservoir or inside the um, hidden layer are changed. So what are we trying to figure out? So we conducted two tasks, two experiments um, on two reservoir computers. One is called the prediction task and one is called the observation task. The observation task is the idea that if you are given one uh, single or, yeah, one single variable, are you able to um, uncover hidden variables. Let's say you only have access to collecting data about one variable, you could feed that one variable into the reservoir and it would give you uh, data from the other two variables for the chaotic system. The prediction case uh, tells you you input x, y, and z at one time step and it gives you x, y, and z at future time steps. So effectively it predicts the chaotic motion. So here's some examples of uh, chaotic systems. These are their attractors, which is one way to understand what chaos looks like. Um, the, there's the Sprott H system, the Rossler, the Rubinovich. These are all um, just three examples of many, many, many different chaotic systems possible. Specifically, in my experiment, I use the Lorenz system. The Lorenz system is a really nice toy system. It was originally uh, created to try to understand the weather, but at this point, it's more of a toy system, which makes it really, really good for conducting um, um, experiments on, but not so good for actually uncovering the weather. Um, but as you see, it's described by three related uh, differential equations. Um, and so these are the three that we'll feed in, the X, Y, and Z. This is what a reservoir on a conceptual level looks like. Um, it's in, so we have the X, which is the input layer, the reservoir, and the output layer. It's important to understand that these nodes inside are not actual nodes, at least not in our experiment. They're just like a really convenient way to understand the math. Um, this particularly is explaining the uh, observation case. So to try to understand what a reservoir computer is really doing, imagine uh, each person in this audience is a node. Then if I gave you some data, that would be X, and you guys all talk to each other, that would be the links. And then at the end, you came back to me and said, this is our, this is our prediction of what Y and Z would look like. You guys would be like a human being reservoir computer. So that's what it's in, in effect doing. Um, the nodes inside of the reservoir, uh, right here, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six shown, but in reality we use 50, 200, uh, a lot. <laughs> the more you use, the better uh, accuracy you get for longer periods of time. So for the methods, um, we used two reservoirs, like I mentioned. One was a tabletop setup, and one was implemented digitally. The one implemented digitally used MATLAB code, and the tabletop setup uh, used um, more physical parts. It was composed of a laser, an oscilloscope, a modulator, an attenuator, a photoreceiver, and a field programmable gate array, an FPGA. So finally, our results. Um, so for the observation task, we were very successful. As you can see, um, the actual and the reservoir uh, graphs are pretty much on top of each other. That means that we are getting out Z, a, a, a prediction of Z, at the same time step that is pretty much exactly what it actually is. Which when you think about it is really, really cool because the reservoir doesn't understand any of the chaotic dynamics at all. We're just feeding in, we're training it on one set of data and then for a long period of time, here it's 200 layup enough times, it can match it very, very well. So that's actually very exciting. Um, and we can see for both Z and Y, um, when you input X, it gives out a fairly, very accurate um, uh, like prediction of what Y and Z are at the same time step. 
So for our prediction task, uh, we also did very well, not quite as well, um, but when you think about the fact that it's the observation case versus the prediction, this is actually uh, pretty exciting. This is still for the up and off times, um, which is a good amount of time. Um, when you compare it to other methods of trying to characterize uh, chaos, this is actually doing very, very well. So um, both for X, Y, and Z, all of them also did very well, so we know our reservoir computers are doing very well, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, so in the future, I'd like to explore connecting the prediction task on the um, tabletop setup. That's one thing that we didn't get to, but overall, I had a wonderful time. Thank you.